Well, I'm honestly blessed to be here. You guys so much for, for having me just for, we have an hour. Um, I have some slides I wanted to just talk about what I've done in um, a career in my life to kind of stand out from the competition and um, really uh, show more than just what I know from a, from a business standpoint, but the values that I have and how I express those through, uh, you know, public interactions on social media and just in the workplace. So that's me. Um, I'm going to share my screen because I prepared some slides for y'all and I'll make these slides available if you, if you'd like them. So let me know if you can see them. I'm going to present now and I'll just run through these really quickly. Can you guys all see, whoop, let me just swap displays. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Yes. Awesome. So just real quick, I mean, you guys are getting ready to graduate and I can guarantee you this, regardless of what, you know, where you go to, you know, what your career is, where you decide to move to, um, or if you stay local, um, you're competing with not just each other, but you're competing with students globally. And, you know, I live, I work in actually the San Francisco Bay Area and I've lived there my entire life. And so we're kind of the mecca of technology, right? We have Apple and HP and Google and all these companies. So you have like all these students from every, you know, all the, you know, Yale University, Stanford, San Jose State, San Diego State, who are all coming to the Bay Area to try to get these cool jobs at these cool companies. And so, you know, as a hiring manager, and I, you know, when I look at resumes or LinkedIn profiles, if nothing stands out, it's just like, you know, first of all, I don't read resumes. Nobody really reads resumes anymore, at least I don't. The industry that I work in, we really don't. We look at LinkedIn. So are you active on LinkedIn? Do you have a profile? What does it say about you? So um, anyhow, that's kind of my quick intro. Um, and just talk briefly about me. Um, I've been in this business for a long time, plus years. Um, start, I was like super young, like 12. And um, I've been TEDx talks. I've done, I, I'm an I'm a adjunct professor at San Jose State. Um, I've taught at Berkeley and uh, St. Mary College of California, which is where I school. And I do digital marketing. So I do digital analytics, social media. I was very early in one of the early adopters of using social media to, um, from a business standpoint. So businesses reach customers and consumers using, using social media. And that's kind of changing. It was back in the day, it was MySpace and friends. And today it's like TikTok. How do you do that? So uh, that's who I am. That's kind of my background. And, you know, I just want to just talk about a couple of things. And I'm hoping you can relate to this because, you know, these are things that I've learned over the course of my career. Um, but I just Googled, like, you know, how do you stand out from the crowd and across this article? And it's from Inc. And it, and it has, like, steps, right? Be disciplined. Know yourself. Be kind. Be confident. And these are all, in my opinion, these are all kind of intuitive, right? You, you know that you have to be responsible. You have to know your motives. You have to take yourself seriously. This is kind of like just common knowledge as you enter into the business world. And so um, there's several books. So, you know, these are three and I'm in full transparency, I read these books, but I just went on Amazon and I started searching for, you know, how do you, how do you stand out? You know, there was a, a ton of books about it's who you know. You might've heard that expression, you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm a firm believer that it's really not even that because um, I know a lot of people. I, I'm a huge sports fan. You know, I watch sports. I'm excited about the NBA coming up. I'm a huge Lakers fan. You know, I know who LeBron James is. He has no idea who I am. Right. I know who, who uh, you know, the CEO of Gliz and the CEO of Microsoft, and they have no idea who I am. And so it's not necessarily who you know, but more importantly, who knows you. That's the key. And I think that's the key that you need to take with you as you begin to journey into the workplace. You know, it's great to network and interact with people, but if they don't know you or they don't know your name, then what's the point? Right. You have to you have to make yourself known um, from a, on a personal level so that people when you know there's a, uh, someone comes across your LinkedIn profile or you're at an event or you're you know it's at an alumni um, educate uh, alumni event and people are talking and your name comes up people say yeah I know her or I know him I've worked with him I've... so just keep that in mind as you think about this journey of building your brand and you know this is you know I talk about in my TED talk about uh, Google right? and Google is you know at the end of the day Google owns your legacy right? You Google anybody, you Google any past president, you Google any celebrity, you Google any athlete, whatever you see on the, in the search results, that is your, that is their legacy, whether or not it's true, right? We live in a world of, you know, fake news and all that stuff. So the question remains is, 
how often do you Google yourself? Now, I don't Google myself that much only because I, well, I'm not narcissistic, but I do want to see if there's any, but any has, but he's written anything about me or, you know, um, because my name's kind of you more a unique side, right? If I, if my name was John Smith, then we have him. But, you know, and there's several other people with my name and we'll be part of a private Facebook group because we get each other's mail. But um, Google yourself and what do you find, right? And is it something that you want to own the search results, right? The only way that you can own the search results with your name is by building your personal brand. Okay? So at the end of the day, Google owns your credibility. And I tell this to students all the time, even Snap, TikTok, all those, you know, micro uh, social networks, even though like Snapchat, you know, it disappears after a certain period of time, um, everything's public. Everything is public. Every photo, every tweet. I mean, people are going back tweets 10 years ago and holding you accountable for what you said 10 years ago. So just remember that everything is documented on the internet. Okay. Even if you have a private page, somebody will get to it. Um, so just be smart, be smart about what you post. Now, a couple steps, and I'm moving really fast. I want to make sure that Jillian has time to speak as well. But, you know, a couple steps here. Establish a view, right? Are you going into medical school? Going into marketing? Are you going into the legal profession? Are you going into construction? What are you, you're doing? Have a point. It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. Because I look at a resume. When I look at a LinkedIn profile, I, I Google them, number one. I Google every, every candidate. I Google. I guarantee you. Because I want to see, just again, they are what they stand for. And if it's in marketing, and even if I don't agree, the fact that they have a perspective and point and they stand behind it, that to me, it's like instant respect, you know, and, and, and instant, like, put this person at the, the list. Because um, by having a, you take a risk, right? You put yourself out there. It shows, it shows, you know, rigor in your thought process. And so establishing a point of view is, is key. A couple of examples of students. Um, well, the, the, the woman, Christina Vargas on the left, she's a, was a grad student at San Jose State. And I taught my students how to establish a point of view and also how to publish the right way on LinkedIn, right? So this is a LinkedIn post that she posted and she's having a perspective that all marketers, all indicators need to be effective communicators in social. And that's why she enrolled in my course. So this is obviously, I liked it obviously and, and, and reshared that, but she's having a perspective, right? She's giving key takeaways. I didn't, I didn't show them here, but that's her, the, the essence of her post. When she, when she first uh, created this post, she, in fact, part of my class is building a personal brand. So they were posting on LinkedIn and they weren't getting any engagement towards the end of the semester. They were getting inbound um, connection requests from, from hiring managers, from recruiters uh, because they were putting themselves out there and then they were doing it strategically with the point of view and the right way. Dave Vinton on the right, she's a TikTok uh, influencer. Um, she is giving some perspective. Now, again, we have to be humble and kind. That's kind of a common practice of being a good person, right? So <clears throat> it's not mind blowing, but she is having effective, right? And she is giving that perspective and made it a public. My second point here is this, repetition is critical. Um, and that is the, that is good marketing. If any of you get into marketing, happy to have a one-on-one -on -one with you. If that's what you want to do, whether it's PR, journalism, or, or marketing, it's what I do. And I'm happy to extend that agent to you, but repetition is critical. You know, um, you guys probably know that commercial. Uh, what is that commercial? Um, dun, 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 dun. Right. That's just song, right? That's the melody. It's all state. You've heard it right? Because we see it on commercials, we hear it on the radio, right? So we, we know that just that little sound is, is, is all state. So, or no, I'm sorry, it's nationwide. It's not all state. It's nationwide is on your side, right? So we know it, it's re repetitive. And so let me show you an example how, of how that plays out in, um, in marketing, right? And, and building your personal brand. This is her. She's a, again, a grad student from San Jose State. She was in my class last semester. And, and notice it's like, Four days ago, three weeks ago, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, she's posting consistently, right? And look at the engagement, right? 34 likes, seven comments. Um, we can't see her views, but, you know, she, she would report back. She was getting 1,200, 2,500, 1,000 views on a LinkedIn post, right? And she's preparing herself to enter into the workforce. She's graduating at the end of the next semester. So she's well on her way 
be ahead of the competition by repetition, right? It becomes habit when you do, when you, when you work out every day, it's not a dream, right? It becomes habit. You need to do it. So if you can establish that repetition right away, then it just, it doesn't, it's not an issue, right? You just find time to do it because it's your daily routine. Now, don't forget the written word. Social media is great, right? I can record a TikTok video. I can do a, I can do a snap. I can do a story on LinkedIn, uh, on Facebook, YouTube, on Instagram. I can do quick stories. There's like no investment in time, right? Unless you're an insert, you're not setting up props and stuff like that. You're just sharing your life story or whatever, whatever you're passionate about. Uh, you know, and so you can't have the written word. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, is with social media, it's short form creative content, right? It's video, it's photography, it's GIFs, maybe it's you talking. The written word is long form, right? It's, it's, it's blogs, if you will. Now, I don't mean blogs in the sense of you have to create a, a WordPress blog or you need a blog on your company blog, but it's, it's long form content. It's, it's, it's the ability to write a well thought out story. And so just some data points here. These are data points for the two articles okay so this is articles written in the mainstream media so if you look at the left basically what this is is and i have two data points here so let me first talk about that 2.7 million monthly searches for tiktok in google so that means every month people like you and i are googling tiktok okay and they're reading articles related to TikTok. now every month i'm sorry over the last 12 months there's been 1.5 million articles published from places like Adweek and other, you know, Forbes, CNN, all these other platforms that are talking about TikTok in different ways. So there's a demand for people wanting to understand what TikTok is, right? That's what the searches are. And the media is creating content um, to alleviate it, to meet that demand, right? And so the same thing with Snapchat. Snapchat is declining a bit overall because TikTok is, is taking that mind share. But one Eight million search per month for just the word Snapchat and Google, and about 100,000 articles over the last 12 months about Snapchat. Okay, so the demand is there. And again, it's writing long form content. Now, here's a couple platforms that you can do that in Medium. Medium is free. You can, it's a huge network of people. And if you're, and it doesn't matter what you want to get into fashion, there's fashion content in there. You want to get in healthcare, there's healthcare content, there's marketing content, business content analytics content, you name it, it's there. And it's great because it's a built-in community, right? And people are, are responding to each other. Same thing with LinkedIn. You have, a link, you have a LinkedIn presence, which I hope you do. You have to uh, write, they have, a, they have LinkedIn status updates and they have LinkedIn blogs, because there's a difference. LinkedIn status updates are just that, it's the feed, right? It's, it's what you write in the feed. And there's actually a, a process to do that. You have the LinkedIn blog, which is more of a, you know, editorial blog. Either way, establish a point of view by writing a little bit more of your thoughts, right? It requires more effort, right? Because it's not recording a video or recording a post or setting up a post. Um, it, requ it, requires a it requires, you know, checking, things like that, because um, you want to make you articulate your perspective um, effectively. I'm almost done. Optimizing your digital profile. Here's some examples. Do less of this. One is, number one, a she, I don't think her. Right now, this is a person at Santa Cruz University and San Diego State University, and they're two different people, obviously, and they don't have a profile photo. Right, number one is, and part of it is it could be their privacy settings. Now, as uh, somebody who who is not really concerned with people seeing my content, my privacy settings are opened up. Like, why anybody can look at my profile link and see where I've worked and what I've done. Now, Sometimes you can you block certain people seeing any type of work history or your profile photo or like that. But if you're looking at an opportunity or build brand or get into a new field, why not allow your why not open up your profile so that anybody can see it? Because these folks are closing it off to me, number one, and I could be a hiring manager looking for somebody of skill sets. And now like, okay, boom. I'm scroll right through these people because a there's no you man. I don't know who these who these people are. They look like there's really no you know. I know the marketing student at Santa Clara University great. I know this other one of these students at San Diego. But what else? Right? There's nothing else that, that compels me. And she has a you know she messed up her formatting here. You know, I'm not I'm not gonna like tear her profile apart. 
that okay. little thing, right? This little return after a specialist in a startup company, that is just a little thing, right? And it's not that I'm going to be overly, you know, uh, analytical about this, but it just kind of turns me off and I would just scroll past it. Now do more of this again. I, Jennifer is, is, you know, she was one of my top 1% in my class, partly because she was a grad student. I think, you know, at San Jose, grad students are a little bit vested into their careers than, than grad, but that's just on my experience in my class, you know? And so, you know, there, she has a personnel, right? It, it's a, it's not a, um, you know, that she took at Olin Mills, if that place even exists anymore, or it's not that professional, but it's not like a selfie in a bathroom either, right? It's, it's a, it's a combination of both, right? It's, it's a picture of her at probably school, San Jose State hoodie on, you know, she's got some cool, you know, all her social profiles up here. Um, she put graduate student at San Jose State University, but she also, obviously, she's interested in digital marketing. Now, if you look at her, her summary down here, her about page, she's talking about, she's enthusiastic about what she likes. She's using words like digital strategy, social media marketing, content creation, right? These are things that, by the way, my wife's a recruiter at eBay. She spends 60 hours a week, probably, looking through LinkedIn, searching profiles. And if you don't put the keywords of the industry that you want to work in, in your profile, you will never show up in the search results when a, a, a recruiter or a hiring manager is looking in LinkedIn. Okay. My wife doesn't have a faction. She's not looking at this of, of, you know, a, a profile, of, you know, resumes or letters, right? She's not, there's not an email address that, pe that she gets people submitting. She's outbound for, for candidates based on the role she's hiring for okay so i want to just call your attention to stuff over here this is a featured for portion of linkedin this just tells me that she is very active right these are all posts that she is publishing on linkedin and then if you look below here her activity you can see that she's also engaging right she's saying thank you she's responding to people who respond to her content so she's spending and this is what i taught my class Spend 15 minutes a day going into LinkedIn, scrolling your feed, liking, commenting, sharing, liking, commenting, sharing, liking, commenting, sharing. 15 minutes, okay, while you're sipping some coffee or Red Bull, whatever, and then go away, right? Go, go classes, go do your homework, do, you know, go to the gym, do what you come back later that afternoon. You're going to go into LinkedIn, and I guarantee you're going to have 10, 15, 20 uh, notifications of people responding back to you, right? It's called reciprocal altruism right it's this idea where you give without the expectation of receiving anything in return i mean that's kind of like great relationship advice too right i mean seriously you don't expect a, a lot but give and i guarantee you it comes back it comes back tenfold when you when you invest in your community couple uh last couple things do the unexpected um and th that is you know if you want a job if you have a company that you want to work at and you, it's your dream company. Why not? And if you work in marketing, you probably know, know what I mean by paid search or paid media. But sometimes I get ads in my personal Facebook page. I'll get an ad from a student who works at, I got an ad with a student who worked at Purdue, uh, UC Michigan, um, Stanford, um, Northwestern, Northern. These are students who are target people at my company and putting basically an ad of their profile because they want to work at Zeno. Or when I, when I worked at Edelman, it was the same thing. Now, why not do the same? That is unexpected. A, a, one of my students years ago, he said, look, I want to work at Ogilvy. Ogilvy was one of the largest, most well-known advertising and PR firms. I said, okay, well, what do you want to do? He said, I want to do, I'm working in advertising. I said, let's, let's do some research and figure out who the hiring managers are, okay? So we found like 10 or 15 potential hiring managers and I say, now let's create a AdWords account. Let's, you know, let's spend a hundred bucks and buy their first and last names from a Google standpoint. In other words, when somebody Googles them, I want your ad to show up in Google, right? And these people Google themselves apparently all the time because they saw the ads like Twitter and they were super impressed. All of them, he was at over five years. He recently, right? And it was a key, had a great experience. So that's what I mean by unexpected. Um, but be careful, right? Just, just be smart about what you do in a very turbulent times and what you say can be held against you. 
So, you know, be sensitive to people and what they care about, who they are and where they're from. And, um, and just, you know, again, do the unexpected and clear and build your brand. So that's my presentation. Um, uh, I'm happy to provide my address or you can just find me up in happy to connect. And if you work in marketing, it doesn't matter what area you want to work in. If you want to meet up and talk one-on-one, -on -one, happy to do a, a Zoom video. My schedule is pretty, pretty crazy, but you know, maybe a week or two out, but happy to have a one-on-one -on -one, 30 minute conversation with you guys um, individually, right? To talk about other things specific to what your, your goals and aspirations are. So I can breathe now. I'm going to start sharing my screen and I hope that was helpful to y'all. Um, where's my, and then I'll pass it over to Julian. Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll leave 10, 15 minutes at the end, guys, for um, Q&A. And then, during before I forget, it will be great to get um, uh, emails, right, that we can share uh, the presentation. And then also, we'll share Michael and Jillian's contact info. Jillian. I'm supposed to say you need, like, a picture, too, or something like that, so that we can post it on our LinkedIn, so that you all have content that you can share, too. Absolutely. Please that helps me. So let me share my screen so I can get this party started. Okay, so you can just see my PowerPoint, right? Yeah, yes, okay. Yeah. So because I am new to the public speaking arena, unlike um, Michael, um, I am not putting it on the slideshow mode so that way I can look at my notes because I couldn't figure that out beforehand. So also um, what you'll see is that I started incorporating, I listened to Michael's TED talk yesterday and you haven't done so, please watch it. it is really just like inspiring to see somebody that you had like a one-on-one -on -one interaction with do an actual TED talk, but then also um, he has some really valuable information and great examples as to things that people did maybe wrong that you can learn from. And so one of the points he just made and one of the points he made in the TED talk that I watched yesterday was that Google gives you credibility, right? And so for, um, for fun, I threw in some of my favorite Googled images of myself. The first being this guy right here. It is me 15 years ago. I was featured in a Washington Post article. Yes, 1920s um, flapper style outfit and all tap dancing. Um, the article was great. It was about like some sort of nomination for um, the show I was in, so that's cool. But the fact that 15 years later, it's still with me just shows you all that things have longevity and they continue to live on. So about me, um, so I am Jillian. I am a talent brand specialist at Elucian. What is a talent brand specialist? Um, I develop Elucian's brand content um, promoting them as a top place that you want to work and grow your career. And so I do this day in and day out by using social media um, that really showcases our culture as a whole. I develop video content and I edit that video content. And then I also look at and develop content for the review sites, such as like Glassdoor and Indeed and more. So how did I get to Elucian? Well, four years ago, I was a student, just like y'all are, and I really fell into my career. I was just filing for Elucian part-time. I was a social worker, and I got my master's degree in social work concentrating in gerontology, and four years ago, I was living in Alabama. Um, I had moved to D.C. because I thought cost of living, I could make a little bit more bang for my buck. Um, but then cost of living also goes up. So depending on how you see it. Um, and it's just somebody within the HR team was like, that girl is the happiest filing person I have ever seen in my life. And as a result, they were like, do you want to take this full-time job? So just remember as you all are graduating, as you all are getting internships, you really can get a position from anywhere. It really just fell out of the sky for me, but it was a beautiful thing because it gave me exposure to all of this 
craziness and beautiful new business lifestyle that I lead every day. And so why am I talking to y'all? Well, I was just in your shoes. And for me, I'm going to share with you on the next slide, kind of four key takeaways that I've learned within the past four years that have really helped me as I start promoting my prefer my professional and personal brand. So hopefully things that you can learn and not have to experience on your own or just can start applying to your day-to-day -to -day job today. Um, I have found that social media can be your microphone um, and super important to put yourself out there and develop content that is specific to you. But it also can be more successful if you use it as a hearing aid um, and really just treat it as a mechanism to listen to people around you and learn that way. I think that's something that has really made me successful at Elucian because I listen to what employees need, what's in the market, and then develop content specifically because of what the company needs are. Um, all right, let's see, how do I, for whatever reason I hid y'all, so here, okay. So building your personal brand. This picture shows up when you Google me and it is a picture of me like just cheering and dancing. It's tied to when my team won fifth at nationals, which was a super cool experience, but also something that I was proud of as a collegiate at a collegiate level, but not maybe something I wanted to carry into the workplace. Um, not because I didn't feel really good about wearing a crop top every day, but people don't necessarily see that as professional. And so really trying to move into that new professional role for me and trying to really grow myself made me try a bunch of different things. And so the first thing I wanted to talk to you all about was picking something that you love about yourself, mastering it, and then owning it. So similar to like Mr. Rogers putting on that cardigan sweater every day, I had somebody who was a mentor to me say, hey, you should pick something that you love about you and just go into meetings and consistently put that, that thing, like have people associate that thing with you. And so what I decided to do personally was every time I go into public speaking events, conferences, um, networking events, whatever it may be, um, I try to wear bright colors because I want people to associate the bright colors with like my bright, cheery, positive personality. Um, but there's a bunch of other things that you can do. At one point, I tried to have a catchphrase. It didn't go well, but I at least was trying different things. I've also heard people, um, there's this one guy in our company who was referred to as the muffin man because he went on site and he would bring people's like favorite pastries and bakery items, which yes, it gets a little expensive. As students, can we probably do that? No, but... Um, it's at least one avenue that you can take. And so I encourage you all to pick something about yourself, figure out, play around with it. Don't be afraid to try different things, master it, and then own it so that people then associate you with that thing. So next is network, network, network. The wider you cast your net, the more people are going to see you. And it'll continue to take yourself and your personal brand to the next level. So when you only broadcast or get to know a select group of people, they're the ones that get to see your talents and your abilities, but it ultimately puts yourself at jeopardy, right? Because the, then people don't know what your contributions ultimately are, which isn't a good thing. You want people to know the things that you're doing in the workplace or within school. How are you, contributing. So don't be afraid to take little bits and pieces from mentors and professors, friends, people that you trust, and try to use that in order to better yourself and better your brand. So if you like something, don't be afraid or say like, oh, that's their thing. Like if you want to wear bright colors, wear bright colors, the more the merrier. Um, 
So with networking, I figured I could be a little bit vulnerable and authentic with you all too. Um, it's scary to put yourself out there. It can be really intimidating to put yourself out there. And this one networking event, I was working with a nonprofit. I was a Lucian's point of contact. And so I was invited to like a VIP thing. And I was like, Ooh, this is so cool. So I made my mom buy me a dress because I couldn't afford it. And I wore really high shoes which I couldn't stand in for longer than an hour. So of course I was like sitting like a wallflower, but at one point, this Capital One employee came up to me and I was like, hi, it's so nice to meet you. Well, I was holding a glass in my hand and she was like wildly shaking my hand. Well, I spilled that glass of water all over her white shirt. And then I offered her a blue napkin, which she then was like, oh, it will stain. And the reason I tell you all that embarrassing story and something that I will always remember, especially because right behind me was the CEO. And so he was watching the whole thing as she basically entered a white, wet t-shirt contest. Um, but the reason I tell you all that is because I've made the worst mistakes ever when it comes to that, but you have to continue to put yourself out there Again, high risk, high reward. And I lived. I haven't seen her again. Luckily, I wouldn't remember her name because I was probably too humiliated. But you recover and you can move past that incident. And until I told you that, you wouldn't have known that about me. So there are definitely things that you can do and live beyond, etc. So the next point is control your narrative and share your story. So this kind of has the two legs to it. Um, it's something that I have found is important because I've watched a lot of my friends go through it. So before COVID, I still technically work the job, but because of COVID and germ regulations, et cetera, um, they don't need me. But I work a retail job part-time at Tyson's Galleria. So if anybody wants to shop at Tyson's, I'm probably there. But um, when I like would talk to my friends within retail, they have all of this great experience, whether it be customer service, whether it be uh, being patient with people or working quickly and being able to count money, which sounds crazy, but like that mathematical um, skill set is really helpful in the long run. And so a lot of my friends, though, when it came to trying to interview for other positions, they had a hard time articulating the skills that they brought to the table. Or, for example, I have some friends that would go backpacking after in the summers instead of taking an internship position. And they walked away from that experience with tons of skills, like being resourceful, learning how to work with a diverse group of people, being collaborative, but then not being able to articulate it within um, like interview settings, which didn't allow them to get jobs, et cetera. And so when you control your narrative and you're able to articulate why you did something to an audience, it ultimately will strengthen your credibility and then enhance your professional brand. So if you're planning on doing something, I heard somebody mention that they have an internship, write about it on LinkedIn. Michael gave you some really great examples and there's plenty more. You could take the little bits and pieces that you've seen other people do and duplicate it and make it your own, really own it. Um, so then the story that I have like associated with this is kind of more of like a personal story um, because it impacted me personally. Um, sharing my journey was something that wasn't always easy for me, but as I kind of put myself out there, um, it's become easier. So as I got into this talent brand role and really kind of figuring out career wise, what direction I wanted to go in, I saw that Elysian as a whole had a lot of opportunity, a lot of really strong women within their leadership team, including Ileon, Tashina and Robin who lead the women in tech group. It's just, it's really inspiring. And our CEO is a woman as well. So I was like, okay, maybe I should develop a video so that we can, 
promote ourselves as a place that women want to grow their career. Well, simultaneously, as that's going on, I started feeling like I was getting bullied at work by this one person. And I started feeling like worse and worse about myself. And by me being able to share my story with my leadership, with my manager, we realized within that video, we could put two people within that camera angle, two people in the shot. So that way they could bounce off of each other and unconsciously they're supporting each other. So turning the lemons into lemonade, I mean, it ended up being a huge company success. We have over 1600 views on link or on, um, YouTube, which doesn't sound that much, but from like a business count perspective that, um, like best practice states that it is a lot, especially for the followers that we have. And Tashina got to participate in that. So I'm sure we'll send you all the video later, but going through that hardship, being able to talk about it is ultimately when I was able to thrive. And so always kind of remember what your worth is, but also be able to share your experiences and your stories because somebody else could be going through the same thing too. And so then last but not least, share your ideas and thoughts publicly. Um, I know Michael talked about this a lot too, but I mean, definitely be careful, but don't be afraid. I think a lot of people don't know where to start, which is where people trip up over themselves. Um, but talk about your accomplishments, talk about your ideas, promote yourself within a Lucian, um, we have like the blog series that we run. And so people will review, edit, kind of have guardrails on the content, which always helped me as a place, a starting place, making sure that I didn't sound stupid or I didn't feel like so alone when I was curating content like that. Um, also, we do these Takeover Tuesdays on our Team Elysian account. And so really being able to like, in a structured format, put myself out there was helpful to my personal brand. And I'm sure at Howard through the career services, there's plenty of things you could do, or just ask your professor, Michael or I to review content that you created. And we can go through that one-on-one -on -one to make sure that you all are promoting your brand appropriately. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, also you all were talking about internships and write about your experience. It really does like validate and make it look like you lived it. You can share your learning and it puts you ahead of the competition that way as well. Um, I think a lot of professionals think that networking or sharing your thoughts publicly through social media isn't like real work or it's a distraction. But I think the truth is that it opens up opportunities. And as I said earlier, it makes it look like you lived an experience, which makes you more relatable as the long run. And even if people don't read or watch it, it's good practice to get yourself out there. You don't need 2000 likes in order to be relevant or for it to be successful. So just remember that as well. So now I thought that we could all kind of open up the discussion with the last 15 minutes. We can do this first or we can do the Q and A first, Ilion, whatever your preference is, I don't care. But hopefully that first part about you picking something you like, running with it, really owning it, kind of, um, it gave you some time to think about maybe like something that you can share. But I was thinking that we could all go around and talk about what we love about ourselves, what our passions are, whatever it may be, just pick one of these and then talk about it. Jillian, can we start with Q and A first? Because I'm, I'm guessing uh, uh, people will have questions on Michael's presentation. I see, um, I saw Doreen posted something in the chat. So maybe we can do Q and A first, then jump into uh, these questions with, you know, great presentation. And, and Jillian, I've seen you grow right since at least you know you and i started working together and one thing that jillian did not mention i mean jillian is one of our biggest supporters of the women in tech and she's actually the lead for our pride um employee resource group at Elucian, and she's definitely when i hear a jillian i hear a lucian brand so she's the person that push 
the branding of Pelusian on social media. So especially since Julian started taking over branding, we see more diversity and inclusion topics on our LinkedIn. She does more videos around diversity and inclusion. And she was the person that we work with also to put a women in tech uh, blog to Sheena Robin and I wrote a women in tech of what it, what it means to be a black woman in tech, right? So Jillian was our partner in crime there. So you definitely sold your short, yourself a little short there, Jillian, but Jillian is definitely one of our biggest cheerleaders. And when, and when we hear like, you know, and, and to her point, right, Jillian is the person that's always happy. So when you hear diversity and inclusion and happiness at the Lucian, you picture Jillian. So that's her brand at the Lucian, right? Um, and thank you so much, Michael. And I want to know who, who has posted a selfie in the bathroom on their LinkedIn. <laughs> have, you seen, <laughs> have you seen that really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm kind of not surprised though. I hate saying it, but I'm not. It's like when people do that on their Tinder profiles or something, you're just like, there's nothing cute about a bathroom. <laughs> Right. And Michael, I mean, you've you've done an amazing, amazing job in that space as well. And thank you for sharing your TED Talk. We'll definitely uh, You're watch welcome. It. Great presentation and great insight. I mean, I learned a lot. I don't know about you guys, but I learned a lot from you, Michael. Uh, so maybe we can jump into the Q&A right now. And we can start with um, Doreen's question. Doreen, do you mind um, mentioning your question? I know you post that in the chat, but since this is a small group, we can just let people uh, say as their question live. Yeah, I actually was just giving um, Michael a shout out for mentioning, you know, it's not just who you know, but also who knows you. Um, that's a thing that's come up in many conversations that I've had professionally and also when I coach students. Um, and so when we think about you going into your internship experiences or you're starting to network, uh, the students that I've seen be really successful are those who put themselves out there who say, my name is Doreen Thomas, I do career coaching, and these are the opportunities that I'm looking for, or this is the work that I've done, and their names then start to buzz and circulate around either, you know, LinkedIn or throughout their company, and then when folks start to think about like, oh my God, I need an intern to do this thing, or I have a quick hire, I need a quick turnaround, they can automatically think like, oh, Jillian would be great for that. She, she already does diversity and inclusion work, or Michael is already great for this because he does these public speaking events. Um, and so I think the, the larger, uh, I guess, theme or topic that we're trying to get into is to feel free to show your authentic self. I really love how we have all been able to laugh and share our stories on here. And that's what, what makes folks connect to you. Um, and so, yeah, again, feel free to, to throw yourself out there authentically so that folks are able to connect with you and so that you can be top of mind when opportunities start to come about. Absolutely. Questions? Mm -hmm. So I have a question for the group, I guess. So for our Howard students on here, um, who has a LinkedIn account? We got one, two, three, four, awesome. And have you guys posted this week at all? No, it's you okay, <laughs> right? I haven't either, but like Jillian said, you can now. Again, we, we can become our own thought leaders. So go ahead and share about your experience today. Um, feel free to tag us. I'm sure everybody on the call, whether Jillian, Michael, Elian, myself, Tashina is on here, Robin. If you wanna connect with us on LinkedIn, um, you can start growing your network that way. Yeah, yeah, tagging, is a, that's a great, that's a great uh, piece of feedback because when uh, I do that, mainly because with my students, I have them tag me because it's part of their homework. Their homework is to create content um, once a week on LinkedIn. And so when they tag me, I can just I get notified and then I can just check it. Okay, they, they've done their homework. But then it's also good for them is, um, you know, what I always, I'll respond, I'll, I'll comment on it. Sometimes I'll share it. But when you do tag other people, it increases the reach of that content. So you know, if you were to tag other students or other, you know, um, executives that you, you know, interacted with or people on your team or other, you know, professors at school, you know, tagging them is, is always a good thing. And, and honestly, like, I, I remember 
the first question I asked my students last semester was, how many of you posted on LinkedIn? Well, no, it was, how many of you have a LinkedIn account? Everybody raised their hand. How many of you posted? Nobody raised their hand. And so they were posting once a week. And I, and I had one semester to basically instill that into them that it was that re repetition, right? They needed to just do it day in and day out. And, you know, honestly, not every, not every student has continued, but there's like four or five who to this day, every week and actually a couple times a week and they're on Twitter. Twitter's another one. I mean, mm -hmm. Twitter's a, a one of the a platform that's not used much by younger generations, but especially even now with COVID-19, there, I mean, there's a ton of this conversation happening. You know, I, I would challenge you, you know, whatever your degree is, whatever you want to work in, go to search.twitter.com and just, and just search for it. To see what the, the conversation is, and there's, a, I guarantee you, influencers, the media, journalists, who are who are talking about it. So, um, Twitter is one. It's one of my favorite platforms still, um, but LinkedIn is is you know they're they're very close. But yeah, just go out there and and tag people and interact, and you know your your you know your license is that you're a student, right? Some some people might say you know don't tag me, you know, in post. That's not you're not good. Well, the fact that you're a student, you know, hey, you're you're testing. You're out there just don't get offended and just keep keep uh, keep pushing forward and you'll you'll make you'll make progress and please use us as a test right please use us as a test and as for our feedback we'll definitely provide any um feedback as needed but please feel free to tag us and caroline thank you for sharing um what you love yeah technology is my passion too so i can connect with you on that yeah. uh we have a question, um, you know, for either you or uh, you, Michael or Jillian. I know we've talked about LinkedIn, but do you have any tips for networking slash growing your brand on Instagram? I just launched my blog and I'm trying to grow my audience and readers. I have one quick idea, then Jillian, I'll, I'll pass it on to you. Okay, awesome. I have a student. I have a student who wants to get into fashion um, and entertainment. So. <clears throat> She's um, in her on her on LinkedIn. She's writing a little. You know, it's it's less about the consumerization of fashion. It's more about business. Her standpoint there. But on LinkedIn, on, on Instagram, she takes photos of uh, you know when when before COVID nineteen would go to the mall, and she would post photos of fashion. You know that she loved. There be you know sure apparel or something. You know I like sneakers. I have all my sneaker stuff on on. on on Instagram. I don't do it on LinkedIn, but I do it on Instagram because I it's my passion. I love it. And so I think figure out what your passion is and just do it. I mean it's the more you do and the more hashtag you know with Instagram you can use hashtags. You can like add hundreds of hashtags right to your post. I wouldn't suggest that, but like use hashtags that people are using. People are gonna see it, interact with you and and then when when someone Google name it'll show up and they'll see the passionate about fashion or photography or, or cybersecurity. I work a lot with cybersecurity. So I know a lot about it. So whatever that is, just repetition and, and um, tell us in different ways. Yeah, actually, I was going to say something really similar. So it's just going to be beating the drum at this um, point. No, don't be sorry. I think that's powerful that like we're having the same point, essentially. Um, for me, making sure that my profile was public um, and then using those hashtags so that you come up in the discovery section. I think it's really hard that unless you have 10,000 followers or more, you can't really like swipe up in order to go to the extra pages. But um, don't be afraid to use like a little bio section or develop a business account as like an entrepreneur because then you'll have other people view your sites too to, if you're positioning it differently. Um, I always have a hard time though with like growing my follower reach, especially, I hate saying this, but I'm going to say it. My personal Instagram for the past maybe like two months, I keep like gaining a follower, then losing a follower. And then yesterday I lost two followers. And I know as a girl, you're like, what? Like, where are these? Like, why are people unfollowing me? But they are. That people are unfollowing you. <laughs> Say that again, Elion. What are you posting that people are unfollowing you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but being persistent too, I think that's part of it. Like with my personal Instagram, um, I'm not always posting content. And so people aren't then engaging with me or they don't feel the need to follow me because 
it's like, oh, once a month, I can check on her if the hashtag comes up or if a friend tags her in something, then I'll see, okay, what is she doing? What is she up to? So I would just say public profile hashtags and then really just continue to post. I might just add one more thing, if you don't mind, like, like don't get worried about your followers. Like I know it's, it's a thing. Like my daughter, like she'll put, she's, you know, she had two, one's a sophomore in high school, one's a sophomore in, in college. And my sophomore in high school, she's like, you know, she'll, she'll post a video on TikTok and she'll be like, Oh my God. I, you know, she like goes back and like counts the views and, you know, she's always setting her, you know, personal, trying to set a personal record, stuff like that. And, and it's, it's fun. It's fun, but don't let it discourage you. Right. Don't let it discourage you. Uh, because content, you know, especially the longer form content has a shelf life of forever, right? And so th the thing with Instagram and, and others, Snapchat even more so, is that that content has a, has a very short shelf life because you post it and then people see it and then they, they're consumed with other posts. So um, try to make those posts impactful, right? Less quantity, more quality content will always do better in the long run for you. I get caught up in likes all the time. I guess with LinkedIn, I've stopped caring as much and it's really helped me. It also makes me less stressed or anxious. Nobody needs the extra stress. No. Do we have any other questions? We have three minutes left. Maybe Jillian, we can pick a question um, on your list. Yeah, I mean, I can pull it up again, or I was thinking that we can just send that slide out so that you all as students can like really think, okay, what do I love about myself and what do I want people to know about me as I start promoting myself? Yeah. And we can talk about it later, whatever it may be. Does anybody want to share what they love about themselves other than Caroline? Jasmine. <laughs> Go Jasmine. I wanted to share something that I'm passionate about. Um, I'm really passionate about brand marketing as far as it comes to like um, beauty brands and just building the diversity up with that. So that's something I'm really passionate about and I hope to just keep going forward with that and just keep following it. Ja Jasmine, <laughs> holler at me when you have it because that's what I do. So when you're ready to, I'm not sure what year you are, but, um, you know, I, I hire students all the time and, and I hire students from my class, right? Because I'm grooming them <laughs> into what I think is valuable. Um, but, but yeah, reach out, let's connect on LinkedIn as a first okay. step. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Oh, no. Anybody else wants to share? Doreen, I don't want to cut you off. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, my dog was just growling at somebody. So I was trying to <laughs> <laughs> calm her down before she shared what she loves about herself, which is growling at strangers who approach our door. So that's all that was. I was going to say, um, we looked at a little bit at the stats before this, and it seemed as though there were like a lot of bio majors that should have been joining. I don't know if any of them are on the call, but I thought that was really cool that so many like science-based people would like want to learn how to promote their personal brand. And so I figured at least some people may be passionate about that or like the medical field or something. Um, my name is Tajay Brown, and I'm passionate about like holistic wellness and psychology. So that's what I want to do. And like, I want to make that more accessible for people and communities of color. So I'm trying to figure out how to brand that. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. So I would say like a personal passion of mine is also holistic. So I have a acupuncturist and a nutritionist and everything that I, I put into having being a whole person and being able to show up. So that's really exciting to hear and definitely send me an email and we can, we can talk about it. Yeah. And, and connect with, send me an email too and connect with me. I'm all about, um, and Robin knows that about me. I'm all about holistic health and feeling good about yourself. I'm actually, um, 
taking my yoga teacher um, training certification right now to become a yoga teacher. So definitely connect with me. So Ellie, in like in the in the fall, you're going to lead us through like a <laughs> I knew you were going to say something like that. <laughs> Like how to fit in like a quick 15 minute stretch at the desk. Let's work on mindfulness and grounding ourselves. Yeah. I think she's going to have to do that for a Lucian employees too. <laughs> and, 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 and Tajay, or Tajay, is that how you say your name? Yeah, Tajay. And that's one of the reasons why I actually went into, and I've shared this story with uh, Robin, but that's a reason why I started taking the teacher training because I go to core power yoga and I didn't, I never saw anybody that looked like me, right? I never saw anybody that looked like me as a student or as a teacher, right? So how do I bring yoga with what yoga has done for me, how yoga has helped me, how do I bring that into my community? So that's one of the reasons why I decided to, you know what, I'm just going to, I still cannot do a headstand, but I'm still going to teach yoga. <laughs> you'll get there. You'll learn how to do a headstand unless you don't want to. Yeah, last time I tried it, I broke my fur. <laughs> <laughs> We are almost at time. Um, I mean, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. We'll have um, a follow-up session, um, you know, just to practice what we've learned. And we'll also share uh, Jillian's questions. But in the meantime, Doreen, if you can please send us the emails. And then please connect with us on LinkedIn. Send us in emails if you have any questions or just want to run something by us. We're here. Uh, we'll schedule the follow-up activity session to continue this conversation. Okay. Don't be afraid to reach out. Michael and I aren't intimidating either. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Good to meet you. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank Bye you.